done this? And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. So who was the sin going to be against? It wasn't even Abraham. That's right. That's right. That's right. So when you cheat on your husband or your wife, who are you sinning against? I didn't say it, the Bible did. Even when you've, you've um, done traditional whatever or engagement or whatever, and you, you, we know that we are going to marry each other. But you know, you went out one evening and that uh, roadside attack went by and you checked that up from down and you said, well, it doesn't matter, I can pass over and marry next week. Who are you cheating against? God. The sin is against God. We do it so many times. Therefore, suffer I thee not to touch her. God even withheld him. So if it wasn't God that has withheld him, he would have done it. But God didn't want him to sin against him. So God withheld him. Seven, now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. If he wasn't dead, why is God now saying you shall live? You want to ask the question? So he was already dead. So when I say some of us are dead, do you understand what I'm saying now? Yes. You might still be alive, walking. Everybody might still see you think you're prospering, but you're dead. If you have eaten that forbidden fruit that you shouldn't eat, you're dead. You might not be dead physically for people to see you, but something in the inside of you has died. Think about it. And if thou restore her not, know that thou that thou shalt surely die. So spiritually he was already dead. But if you now God is now saying to him, if you don't restore, then you will die physically. So if you don't want to stop whatever it is that you're doing that you shouldn't be doing now, you will die. I'm not saying I want anybody to die, but the choice is in your hands. If one of those uh, ovarian cancer don't catch you or sabbatical cancer don't catch you, how many STD, uh, ST, yeah, diseases are available now? So many. Chlamydia or chlamydia. You can't see any symptoms. You can't see any signs. Before you know it, it's too late. This will not be my grandmother is doing me, my mom's auntie, cousin. No, you're doing yourself. Not only he will die, look at it, and thou and all that are thine. Do you see how we even put people around us in trouble? So it's not only him that will die, everything that belongs to him will die. That's why some of us are dying as a result of the sin that somebody around us has put their hand into. We know nothing about it, but we are partaking in it. So if you don't love yourself, please consider those around you. Isn't it 
funny, when I think about it, sometimes you look at these so-called rich people where we come from, and you see everything so rosy in their life, but there's always a bottle or a comma. Mm -hmm. Something has to die in return for that thing that they put their hand into. Eight. Therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. I'm hoping people will be afraid today. Amen. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee? That thou hast brought on me and my kingdom a great sin. So to sleep with somebody else's wife or husband, or somebody that doesn't even belong to you is what? A great sin. A great sin. Guess what? It's not actually until you've done it, you know? The Bible said, in as long as you have thought about it in your heart. So you might have thought about it, and then you actually got to the point that you didn't do it. But guess what? You've already conceived the idea in your heart. You've already done it. The Bible says it is a great sin. <coughs> Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. I love the way he's putting the blame somewhere else. Don't you wonder how we do that as well? Uh, I, I was sitting on my own and he just approached me. You had a choice. Just like you had a choice to decide whether you wanted to be a Christian or not a Christian. God didn't force you. You chose. Everything about God, he gives you a choice. You have the choice whether to steal or not to steal. You decided not to steal. So why is it that it's always easy to say, oh, but he did and she did. I wouldn't have done it if he hadn't. I... That's one of the greatest things that we have, especially between husband and wife. We do things that we're not supposed to. And I said, well, if he hadn't done this, I wouldn't have done that. Oh, I love God. It doesn't count. Because he will stand accountable for what he does, and you will stand accountable for what you do. So there is no excuse to say, I did it because he did that. Or I went out to another woman because she did that. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. We need to take responsibility for our actions because we will give account for our actions. And verse 10, And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet, indeed, she is my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. Because many times people quote that place. She is his sister. Probably what we call half sisters. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said unto her, This is thy kindness which thou shalt show unto me. At every place whither we shall come, say of me, He is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants and gave them unto Abraham and restored him Sarah, his wife. He only took the wife, but look at what he had to give back in return. <coughs> yeah. 
What do we know that we are going to have to give back in return? <clears throat> it took sheep, oxen, men servant, women servant, and gave, and gave the wife on top as well. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee. Dwell where it pleases thee. And unto Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold, he is to thee a covering of the eyes unto all that are with thee and with all other. Thus she was reproved. What does that tell us? Abimelech is saying to Sarah that Abraham is a covering for her. Doesn't the Bible say that before in New Testament? Doesn't he say so? And unto all that are with thee. So everybody that was around Abraham, he was a covering to all of them. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife and his servants, and they bare children. So when he took Sarah, what happened to the whole of his whole household? The whole of his household suffered for that action that he did. God made all of them barren. Some of us were praying for fruit of the womb. But I wonder what we have done wrong along the way. It's the bitter truth. It could be the consequences of somebody having done something they shouldn't have done. Wasn't it the Lord that opened the womb of uh, Rachel? Mm -hmm. 